Good morning, students. Today we are going to start with the third experiment that is conduction of water through xylem. And in this case, we have taken two leafy shoots, that of balsam plant, which have been cut under water to prevent air bubbles getting in. So these shoots are cut under water so that air bubble may not enter the xylem vessels and keep them uh, their lower end dipping in water. Remove about three centimeters long ring, outer ring that is phloem from setup A and put it in the beaker and then uh, in this case the central part is intact and, uh, and a ringing experiment also it is called girdling and in other beaker B remove an equal length of the central part after incising. Incising means giving a cut in the stem for full thickness and keeping the peripheral part intact and the shoots are then fixed to the stand and are allowed to remain for about two days with their lower ends immersed in water. It will be found that the leaves in the uh, of, uh, case of the first twig that is A, they are, uh, they remain turgid and stand out almost normally. But those in B get wilted or droop down and the experiment proves that the water conducted upward in plant A but it is not conducted in B why we have removed the xylem vessels in case of B. And the next experiment is to show that food from the leaves is conducted downwards through the phloem in the stem. Cut a ring of a healthy potted plant or around a thin twig of guava or any other tree deep enough to penetrate the phloem and cambium but not the xylem. So you are going to give a deep cut <coughs> to remove the phloem but you should not damage the xylem. And it will be seen that the sap starts oozing out from the uh, further cut margin of the stem showing thereby that the sap in the peripheral part flows in downward direction. So you will find sap oozing out from here. This shows that the sap in the peripheral parts it moves in downward direction. After some weeks, it will be observed that the part of the stem above the ring, here, above the ring, has grown in diameter and the stem below the girdle has stopped growing and may even die. When the stored organic contents of the lower part are exhausted or get finished off. And the fresh healthy condition of the leaves in this experiment also proves that the leaves continue to get the supply of water through the deeper located xylem. But the leaves, they are healthy. Why? Because they keep on getting water from the lower part and they manufacture food and they are fine. While this lower part of the plant starts withering off and finally it will die. Next, we come over to forces contributing to ascent of sap. I told you it is not only the root pressure which is responsible for the ascent of sap. There are some other forces also. And root pressure, of course, helps in the ascent of sap 
up to a certain height and may be enough for herbaceous plants. The other forces are capillarity of the xylem vessel causes the water from lower level to rise to the fill up the vacuum created by the loss of water due to transpiration from the leaves. Narrower the diameter of tube, greater will be the height of water rising in it exerting a force called capillary force. Then transpiration pull. As water is lost from the surface of the leaves by the process of transpiration, more water molecules are pulled up due to that tendency of water molecules to remain uh, joined to each other which is called cohesion and thus to pro uh, produce a continuous column of water through the stem. And another force is adhesion. It causes the water to stick to the surface of the cell. The water molecules, they adhere to the or stick to the surface of the cell, thus drawing more water molecules from below when the leaf cells lose water during transpiration. And this pulling force provided by the leaves is especially important in tall trees and such as pines which do not have enough root pressure. And even the sap moves downward to carry the food. So this downward movement of sap is relatively simple. The food manufactured by the leaves is dissolved in the water and it flows down mainly on account of the force of gravity. So with this, we finish the lesson and still if anyone has doubt, can ask.